In this final video on Apple's mail program, we're just going to talk about junk mail, signatures, and rules real briefly. First off the bat, I have this email in my inbox here that is marked as junk. You'll notice this one from training. It is a thank you letter. It is in brown. That brown indicates that it's junk. If I click on it right here, it's going to say at the top of the messages that I marked it as junk or that mail thinks it is junk. If I click not junk, okay, or the button up here, not junk, you'll notice now it's not brown anymore. Okay, This is important because when you first set up mail, you have to train it what is junk and what is not junk. Okay, So I could just leave it as junk and you know whatever, no problem, or vice versa. Uh, I could leave it as not junk and, and just throw it away. But um, it's important to mark things properly as it not junk or not junk so that you're teaching mail how to um, how, how to you know what is junk how to filter stuff for you once you've done this for a couple of weeks you, you go through your inbox and you mark things properly as junk or not junk then you want to set it up to work automatically to do that go up to mail on your menu bar and then down to preferences and click on your junk tab at the top then you just check this little box right here. When junk mail arrives, okay, currently it's just marking it as junk mail but leaving it in my inbox. But after a couple of weeks of training it, I want to click this button, move it to the junk mailbox. Okay, and it'll ask you, uh, do you want to move junk? And you can say move if you want. Okay. And then you can close it. Now you'll notice that on the left side here, you now have a junk mailbox. Okay, mine is empty. But uh, yours might not be. And uh, now, when you receive emails, if mail thinks it's junk, it won't even put it in your inbox here alongside all of your other emails. It will put it straight in your junk mailbox, okay? Thus, kind of filtering out of the way. What I suggest is go through your junk mailbox, um, I don't know, once a week or once a month, and just kind of see if there's anything important that happened to have accidentally gotten in there. In my case, mail uh, is just real smart and does a great job of, um, of filtering out what is junk and keeping what is not junk. Uh, but be sure and train it. Next, we're going to go back to mail preferences. We're going to add some signatures. Okay? There's a signature button on the right side. You know that when you've received emails from uh, some people, especially businesses, they have this nice professional looking automated signature at the end with a name and a company name and a telephone number and an email address and a website and mother's maiden name and what they ate for breakfast in the morning and all this information just overloading down the bottom. If you want to create your own signature, you can do that here as well. Okay? We'll just create a simple kind of personal one, but you can customize it however you want. Uh, you may want to select which account you're using on the left side. In my case, I only have one, but I'll select Gmail. Anyway, in this middle column, this is where we're going to add new signatures. So I'll click the plus button here, and I will say, I'll just call this, this is the name of my signature. I'm going to call this signature interlaced. Okay. And then over here in this box on the right side, this is where I actually create the signature. This is what it's going to look like when it actually gets put on my um, email. So I'm going to, of course, first type in my name. Okay. And then I'm going to put in, uh, I don't know, maybe a phone number for the company. Okay. And then maybe our website as well. Um, if you want to kind of snazz it up and make it look differently, uh, you can go up to Format and Show Fonts or Command-T on your keyboard. Okay. And then it'll open up the standard kind of font window like this. So now you can select text and change the color of it. Like I might want to make this kind of a medium gray. Or maybe I want it ditto. Notice it's changing how it appears here. And my name here, I want to, I want to make that bold. I want to make it a little bigger. Okay. 
When you're done, close your font window. Make sure it's the way you like it. Uh, this right here, two important features at the bottom, will let you choose a default signature. So in my case, every time I send an email now, it's going to automatically put on this signature, Joe Bob Smith with phone number and his, um, website. You could turn this off if you want, but I'm going to leave it on. Also, I do want to place the signature above quoted text. So, for example, with this as is, I'm going to close this, save all that, and I'm going to reply to this uh, email. Okay. I'll have my signature, but notice it's down at the bottom below the uh, email that I'm replying to, not up here with what I'm writing. If I want to change that, I'll go back to Mail Preferences, and I'm just going to check this box. Now watch what happens. When I check the box to place the signature above the quoted text, and I close that, okay, I'm going to re-add my signature. Now it's going to add it above the thing that I'm replying to, above the quoted text. So this makes a lot more sense to keep it in line with the message. Okay. So going back to Preferences, I do want to keep this checked. And I do want to uh, always use this signature. Okay, so go ahead and click the plus button to add a signature. Type in your signature here. Show your fonts to be able to change uh, what your signature looks like. Make it default by selecting it from the list here and place it above the quoted text. Okay, I'll close all this stuff down. The last thing that we're just going to touch on is rules in Mail Preferences. Okay, um, I'm not going to go through these in, in real detail here, but uh, in principle, these are just another way of automating how Mail is going to sort through all your stuff. Okay, so we talked about smart mailboxes in another um, video, which let you set certain conditions for what will or will not be included in a mailbox, but and we did that well. We did that by setting conditions, right? Who it's from, or what date it was received, or whatever. But the consequence of all that was always that it was just added to this one mailbox. With rules, however, you can set both conditions, just like we did before, but also actions. Okay, this is nice because you can have all the messages from Frank be colored red, so that you know not to read them from Frank. Or you could have any message from you know, your best friend automatically moved to the trash can, for example, or whatever, okay? So um, you name it here, you set your condition here, again, who it's from or to, or if it's junk mail, or when it was received, or whatever. And then on this last line here is where you perform your actions. So if something meets the above condition, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to play a sound, bounce the icon in the dock, do you want to reply to it automatically? Do you want to move it to a particular mailbox, etc.? Okay. So I'll give you one example. If any of the following message is met, okay. uh, the condition is I receive an email, basically. The action that I want to perform is play a sound. And I'll play the sound. Okay. Now, if I click OK, I've set up this rule so that every time I receive any type of email message, it will play a sound. Okay, Or I could say bounce the icon in the dock. Okay, So that every time I receive an email message, this bad boy down here in the dock just bounces up and down incessantly, uh, letting me know that I got a new email. Okay, Play around with the rules. There are a lot of neat stuff you can do. Uh, sky's the limit with that. That's it for our whole mail section from setup to understanding the interface to writing emails, creating mailboxes, all that good stuff. Hope it was helpful for you.